Okay, so uh, can you hear us? Fine? Yeah, we can hear you and we see your okay. first uh, chart. Okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, we are glad to be here. Uh, we are actually currently uh, joining from our hotel in Singapore where we are attending the FSC conference where actually Andre presented uh, part of the work which we will be uh, showing you today, uh, part of our OSLC-based service-oriented architecture. So hopefully the connection will be stable. We also need to connect to our servers for a demo through a VPN. So it's kind of very, very uh, complex setup for, uh, for just the hotel room. So hopefully everything will go right. And uh, what we will be talking about today is how you can use OSLC uh, to make your analysis tools accessible to uh, normal users. So they do not need to do all the tedious work to get everything working. And uh, just try if the slides are working, yeah. And so the first part will be presented by my colleague uh, Andre, uh, which will be the server side of our uh, architecture. Then we will uh, switch to the client side and uh, some supporting services. And we will finish with some experience with OSLC we have uh, by applying it for like two years now in Honeywell. So Andre, the floor is yours. <laughs> Okay, so hello everyone, I'm Andre, and uh, I'd like to start the talk with like a motivational question, and that is, isn't a tool no one uses in a way useless? Well, and this is something really we really want to focus on, and we're trying to make analysis tools as easy to adopt and use as possible. And uh, when I say analysis tools, I mean any sort of static analysis, dynamic analysis tools, verification tools, test generation tools. Uh, in fact, the approach should be applicable to almost any command line tool, as long as it has a command line interface. But we do focus on analysis tools in terms of design and features. Um, and our, our approach to doing this is basically uh, three steps. First, we want to uh, transform tools to web services. And then we want to access those services through some sort of user-friendly REST clients, oh, sorry, just user-friendly clients. And then finally, we use orchestration for automatic discovery and configuration so that uh, the clients can discover available tools and they also can configure themselves for different tools automatically. And we, to do this, we have three tools, let's say. The first one is Unite, second one is Unic, which is our server and client that we made. And for the orchestration, we use the Eclipse Arrowhead framework, which basically allows the orchestration. And this is basically what it looks like now, let's say a developer needs to manage all his tools manually, you know, takes quite a lot of work or at least can take a lot of work. And our goal is to make it look something like this, where basically you have Analysis tools as web services wrapped by Unite. That's what makes them into web services. And then the developer has uh, a plugin that uses Unic in his ID. Here it's Eclipse. And basically, the ID does all the work for the de developer. So he doesn't need to do uh, nearly as much as he had to do before. And then also, we use the Eclipse Zero Head uh, framework to do the the discovery and uh, automatic configuration, as I already said before. So basically, the architecture consists of these three components, and this presentation will be sort of divided into three sections. So first, I would like to talk about Unite, which is the adapter that makes the transformation of tools into web services possible. And then for the Unic and Arrowhead tools, I will pass the word over to Jan. Um, so first, a little bit of motivation again, uh, for you may that that is, uh, imagine that you learned about a new analysis tool that you would like to start using. And, and that isn't a command line interface. And like basically first, the first option to adopt the tool is you can just install it on your own laptop, for example. But I'm sure most of you probably experienced this before already. Sometimes it can be pretty hard to install a tool. It can take quite a lot of time for a number of reasons. 
And the worst part is that if you do manage to install the tool, you like it, and then your colleagues also want to use it, they also need to go through the installation process, which will also take them quite a lot of time. And then even if you do install the tool, the execution might be limited on your laptop because you know the CPU isn't fast enough or you don't have enough memory or something like that. So there's another option to do this, and that is uh, using the tool as a web service. So this basically would solve your the issues you had on the PC because now you only need to, to install it once on the server and then everyone can use the same installation. And also, also for the execution, basically the server can all, of course be much stronger than your CPU it can have, uh, sorry, laptop, so it can have much higher performance. And then also the execution is offloaded to the server. So it's not putting your computer on the load. So even if it takes hours, you can just do something else in the meantime and interrupt it. But the issue here is that someone needs to make the web service. The, the tool isn't just going to magically be a command line, uh, a, a web service from a command line. And so this is basically the, what we're pr proposing that is our tool Unite, which can do the transformation for you uh, with very little work. In fact, you don't need to make any modifications to the source code of the tool or Unite. Uh, you don't need to be an expert on web services. And you basically only need to create a few configuration files. And on top of that, the interface of the web service provided by Unite will be an OSLC interface, which I'm sure since this is also CFest, uh, you all know the advantages. Uh, for us, it's uh, namely easier integration into other services. And also we can reuse clients if you already have an OSLC client, for example. And there's, there's other advantages, of course. Um, may, might be mentioned later. So here, basically, you see the analysis tool on your computer used through command line. Here, analysis tool on the server used through some sort of client. But again, someone needs to make it into web service, which takes a lot of work. Web Unite, basically for free, very little work. You just wrap the tool in Unite, and then it has a web service interface. And you can start using a variety of clients, any sort of basic REST client, or you can go fancier, an ID or a web client. And then since it's an OSLC interface, uh, this really allows us to um, allow anyone who already has a client to very easily reuse it, just uh, maybe switch the domain if he's using a different domain, and just start using that client to interact with Unite. Also, it makes it easier to create, create new clients because you can reuse uh, some of the components like the standardized communication. Um, the, the, the domain which we are using is the OSLC automation specification. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with this particular one. I'm gonna talk about it a little bit later. Now let's talk about basically how you use Unite. So first you of course need to install it on your server along with the tool that you want to use. You don't need to create some configuration files, restart Unite, and then you can start using the tool. Uh, the configuration basically consists of uh, two steps. First, you need to define an automation plan, which is an OSLC resource. And uh, this most importantly means you need to define input parameters that will be used to run the tool. And these will be based on the command line interface of the tool. Then you need to define some technical properties, uh, most importantly, path to the tool executable so that Unite knows how to run the tool. And then to run the analysis, there's three steps. First, you need to transfer your SUT to the server by providing files. file source, could be a URL, or you could just directly encode the file in your request. Uh, SUT stands for system under test, and it could be your source codes, your Eclipse project, could be MATLAB models, could be basically any files the analysis needs as inputs. And once you do that, you can request execution of the analysis, which uh, you do by most importantly providing values for those input parameters you defined in your automation plan. Unite will then take those from those values, combine them into a, oh, okay, I don't know what that was. Um, Unite will combine them into a command to execute using the local shell. Uh, on the SUT. So, and once the analysis finishes, you can get the results, which will be basically any files produced by the analysis or the standard outputs. 
Uh, it's very important to note that the configuration steps will can be done by the tool provider. So let's say the server admin, so that the end user doesn't need to uh, do the configuration themselves. And also the steps needed for running the analysis can be hidden by a good client so that again, the users don't need to know about these steps. They can just click a button in their ID, for example, and run everything. And we've already tested this approach on a number of tools such as Facebook Infer, which is a static analyzer, or Palgrin and Anaconda, which are dynamic analyzers and others. And we're still trying to add more uh, to really make sure that uh, UNIT is as, uh, is usable for as wide range of tools as possible. Um, and since this is OSLC first, I have some more details about how we use OSLC in UNITE. Uh, so basically UNITE was created using Eclipse LIO and the uh, resources available there. We use LIO Designer, we are using LIO Store, we use LIO Domains which really made it so much easier to create everything. And it was very useful. Um, and you can see the automation domain on the right. So basically consists of automation plans, automation requests, and automation results. And we use automation plans to basically represent individual analysis tools. So each tool will have its own automation plan, but you can also define multiple plans for a single tool and uh, define different parameters or provide default values for the parameters. So that basically you can have a different automation plan for like a, let's say pre-configured analysis run so that the user maybe doesn't know the parameters of the tool. They just want to run analysis pre-configured to detect their data races with a time or something like that. We then use automation requests um, to request execution of the analysis and the parameters there will correspond to the command line argument. And then the result, uh, as I already said before, can contain any standard outputs downloadable files. And at the bottom, you can see how we basically translated command line usage of a tool to um, interactions with Unite through the automation domain. So basically, your automation plan sort of corresponds to running the help of a tool because that, that tells you about the parameters then running the tool with some sort of uh, arguments basically corresponds to creating an automation request. And then reading the output of the tool corresponds to getting the result. Again, with that, that's everything from me. That's all about Unite. Uh, I do have some backup slides about some details if anyone's interested later, but now I'm handing it over to you, Jan. Thank you, Andre. So now let's look at the client side which is unique or unite client. So where it fits actually, it's actually a plugin for Eclipse. We have another plugin for VS Code as work in progress, which should be uh, available later this year. So if we look uh, in more detail, what actually uh, unique is, uh, it's Eclipse compatible client for Unite, which means that it can be fully integrated into the Eclipse IDE, as you will see in the short demo uh, in a while. And you can also use it in your standalone Java applications if you want. It's modular and extensible, uh, which actually means that the interaction with Unite is split into tasks. You have many built-in configurable tasks available, but you can also define your own task and dynamically load it uh, into the client if you want. And uh, I would uh, like also to mention here that the OSLC tasks which we are using are using internally OSLC client from Eclipse Leo uh, that we integrated into the Eclipse IDE. The analysis is then done through what we call sequences of tasks. And these tasks can be loaded from a directory, an update site. You can push it together with the installation of Unique if you want, or you can use Eclipse Arrowhead, which is the most convenient and most flexible way. So if you uh, look uh, at an example of a task sequence, this is a task sequence for, uh, for Facebook Info. It actually uh, contains nine uh, tasks which are, um, which are executed uh, in a sequence. 
The first two tasks, collect files and collect SVT properties. Uh, they are just collect uh, the input files you want to analyze and some additional parameters needed for the analysis. For example, infer needs a build command to uh, successfully perform an analysis. Then you see five blue tasks, which are all OSLC tasks. First is registering the files on a remote server. This is the register SUT. Check SUT registration, just wait until the files are ready. As Andre mentioned, we are supporting static dynamic analyzers and so on. And uh, if you have dynamic analysis, you need a compiled code. So actually part of Unite if you request it, can compile your code for you and provide a binary as a system under test that your analysis can use. So you can actually uh, you can actually request either source code or compile binaries if your analysis wants. Then you see perform analysis, which starts here uh, the Facebook infer analysis, get analysis results, waits until the, result, the analysis is complete, which may take some time, of course, and fetches the results to the Eclipse. The extract info from analysis result is just the simple task that uh, extracts the OSLC data and uh, moves them to, uh, let's say, more universal internal representation that can be processed by any uh, of the rest of the red tasks, which are mainly for uh, checking for errors and processing the output, which in this case, for example, visualize the um, output in uh, the Eclipse IDE. So if we look more closer at how the architecture is actually looking, uh, you can see the part called job, which is the task sequence, which you already saw an example of. And you can see that around it, you have the JTE or Java task executor library, which are the built-in tasks you can use, you can configure and use in your task sequences. And the JSAM library, which is a simple extension manager for Java and other of our libraries, which handles dynamic loading of additional user tasks if you want to. So you can either use the built-in task or your own task to form the job, the task sequence, and then register this task sequence for use in Eclipse uh, IDE. So you can invoke it from the UI and see the results uh, in uh, the Eclipse visualized in a, let's say, user-friendly way. So actually how it looks like uh, in, uh, in the Eclipse, you can see that uh, here in the menu, you just right click your, your um, project, go to tasks and run analyze with Facebook info. Then you can see that the results are transformed by the task to Eclipse markers which will be linked to a concrete lines in the source code. So the user have it visualized in the same way as for example, compiler errors. Okay. So now let's just quickly swap to a simple demo. So you can see it, that it's working. You see Eclipse platform here. If I right click the shared, go to tasks. This is a Java Maven project and I choose the analyze with Facebook info and run it. It will run as a background job. You can see that it's in progress here. It will take just a while because it's not that uh, big project, uh, yet it needs to transfer the files on the remote server through the VPN, as I mentioned. So it may be a bit slower than <laughs> usual. And when it finishes, you will see it in the problems as three resource leaks and two null references were found. If I right click something, I can open it directly in the, in the editor and uh, show, show it here. So here you can see that you can very easily run the tool and the OSLC infrastructure is actually completely hidden from the user. Okay, now this is fine that we have a client, we can configure it for example, from the update side, however, what if you have multiple clients? Here is where the Eclipse Arrowhead can actually help you. So if you are having multiple files on your network, then what you can do, you can install Eclipse Arrowhead there and Unite and Unique are both Arrowhead compliant. So they will connect to the Eclipse Arrowhead services and can register not only information that they are available, but also they can provide the configuration, the task sequences themselves so that the client can actually fetch it. 
So when they connect to Eclipse Arrowhead, they will push the configuration files, the task sequence definitions there. Then the client can actually fetch it and it will show these entries for analysis in your IDE. Okay, so we have client automatic configuration through the Eclipse Arrowhead. What more we can get with these services? What about if you want to add your own tool? What do you need to do? You just take your tool, unite, and unite two configuration files, and you are done. You can push your configuration. It will be fetched by the client, and your tool will show in the Eclipse IDE in the unique client. What if some of the analysis tools are actually shut down? They are not available anymore. It will deregister in Eclipse Arrowhead and forward this issue, this, uh, these facts to the client. So it will, they will just disappear from your menu. Then if you, for example, want to have multiple instances of your tool, we have a traditional use case that we need the servers in the US, EMEA regions and so on. It's actually very easy because you can copy the configuration with some very small changes. And right away, in a matter of minutes, you can have multiple new instances running uh, everywhere on the on the, your network. And they are, again, available in your clients. What about if you connect multiple clients to this infrastructure? Well, in this case, you do not need to do anything because all the configuration and information is already in Eclipse Arrowhead. So it will feed all the clients you have around your network. The users do not need to do anything. They just see all the available analysis and all these lists they see everywhere are up to date because as you already see, when you register a client, it will show up. When you, when you shut it down, it will disappear. And this is the last quick demo, which we will do. I have an SSH connection here when I do not have a running Unite right now, but if I actually start it, it will boot up all three parts uh, of the Unite, which is both the part for registering the SCBT um, input data and uh, the service for doing the analysis. And when it starts, we should be having a new entry in our Eclipse. So let me just quickly delete the markers here because we can do the analysis again. Okay, so we are ready to go here. And now when I go to shared tasks, you can see I have another entry, Facebook infer through Arrowhead. I can run it again because the Unite instance itself actually provided the unique configuration itself. So the unique already know how to handle the interaction. And when it finishes the analysis, we should get an error. As you can see, there are just two resource leaks and two, net, uh, two null references. This is because we are running a different version of Facebook Infer on the second server. So it gives, an, uh, it gives uh, one error less than uh, the previous version. You can clearly see here that we are running two different uh, servers. I'm not trying to kind of fool you with using the same running server as before. And if I kill it here and shut it down and go back to the tasks, you can see it disappeared. Again, it's not there anymore because it automatically deregistered on the shutdown. Okay, so let me quickly finish our talk. In the last part, we'll quickly mention how is our experience with OSLC in Honeywell and some related work which we have in progress. So I will talk about the infrastructure we have in the Brno site where we deployed Unite mainly with the highlight tool, which is an in-house test vector generation tool. It takes simulating models as an input, so no source code in this time, and we can easily use Unite and Unique for it. We have five servers there running for approximately eight months now. Nearly 50 engineers are using it and uh, it's quite uh, loaded because it handles thousands of executions per month. We actually have four different clients uh, beside the Unique, which is the only full-fledged uh, OSLC client because you are using Eclipse Lio. We have three more, let's say, single purpose clients that are just tailored for the Unite's automation specification domain. 
a web UI, a PowerShell command line interface, and Forex desktop tool, which actually uses OSLC to do analysis using multiple tools, all through OSLC interface, and aggregate the results of all of these analyses. What we see as advantages of OSLC is that's open source, it's distributed, and it's a very rich integration technology. Um, it was very easy to integrate it into Eclipse and uh, desktop applications as well. The greatest uh, advantage, I would say, is that it's flexible and extensible, both with new resources or entire specification. For example, Unite actually uses the automation specification extended with the notion of SUTs, Andre already talked about. What we see as some disadvantages is that uh, the XML transfers are consuming a lot of bandwidth. So we often have a long delays when we are trying to transfer a lot of files. We need to encode them in base 64 or other formats to be able to actually put it into the OSLC request. And we were also trying to use OSLC for file management or managing repositories such as Git or SVN. And it was also not working very well. Another situation when OSLC was not working very well was heavy event th triggered traffic. And as for some ongoing and future work, I already mentioned that we have Unite Client for Visual Studio Code uh, in progress. We were actually looking at OSLC for JS. However, it's very basic. So we started creating our own JavaScript based OSLC client inspired by LAN where we actually have the domain separate to the client and we can switch the domains as we can do it in Lyo, which is a very powerful feature. It should be available in the end of this year. Then we also have an architecture management adapter for EMF based models. It's actually already available with a study with Capella to uh, access a subset of EMF model elements, and we map them into the uh, SysML v2 OSLC domain, which they already have. We also have a new work for uh, on the requirements management adapter for requirements for Jira as a backend. And as part of this work, we are also looking how we can use OSLC requirement management specification to uh, store and access semantically rich requirements. So not only just plain textual requirements as it's still prevalent everywhere up to now. The last uh, work which I want to mention is that uh, we are looking at automatic generation of UIs for OSLC data and interfaces. We want to use it to actually be able to automatically adapt the UIs of our clients to the adapters they are interfacing. So when we, for example, generate the, the interface for various analysis tools, we will be able to also generate UIs for interfacing them. Both of these works uh, are expected to have some first prototypes in uh, approximately half of the next year. So this concludes our presentation. And thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, we'll be happy to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Jan, for uh, your, your, your presentation. Uh, uh, yeah, we ran out pretty much out of time. Uh, there are a couple of questions. Let's take them. I see, uh, although we can ask many questions about your pres presentation, it's really interesting. Uh, one presentation was the about the uh, the way that you create automatically, you create the OSC interface by this question from Peter Chandler. Are you essentially using the command line and you somehow map the, the way you automate you, you are reading and writing into the command line of the uh, of the of the, the, the tool you're wrapping? Yes, that is correct. We are actually, it's an adapter. So it runs along with the analysis tools and it just uh, kind of wraps it and uh, internally internally starts it in the local terminal or local shell. And uh, then uh, forwards the results and uh, transforms them into SLC result when the analysis is done and sends it to the, to the remote client. Okay, there was another question, but we are really, I want to keep the schedule. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, we definitely need to contact you about your usage of the automation domain. I think it's a domain that probably you guys are the experts on. Uh, 
Um, but we, we need to continue with the, with the program.